I want to talk about Star Wars Tales of the Jedi, which is now on Disney+. Plus. These are six different shorts. They run about 15 to 17 minutes, so you can probably get all six of them watched in about an hour and a half. That just dropped on Disney+, Plus from producer, director, writer Dave Filoni, the same guy behind the Clone Wars show, the Rebels show, the Bad Batch show, and obviously a big figurehead with the Mandalorian and the um, the Boba Fett show and all the stuff he's done with Jon Favreau. Now here with Tales of the Jedi, we have Filoni going back to his roots, which is telling a story of the Jedi. Various little anthology stories that are somewhat interconnected of the Jedi in the prequel era, sort of giving us more uh, lore, giving us more side stories, and even touching on a time period that is often not talked about enough, and that is before Attack of the Clones. A lot of these stories take place, in fact, I'm pretty sure, I think all of them, take place before Attack of the Clones. That time period, either during Phantom Menace or in between Phantom Menace and Attack of the Clones, was not often discussed because we had the Clone War show in between episodes two and three. Then we had a whole bunch of stuff, multiple movies, the Rebel show, Bad Batch between episodes three and four. That time period between episodes three and four has really been delved into quite a bit. Um, but this time period, this is Dave Filoni back to his roots, back to doing what he does best. Now, of course, when I say the word Dave Filoni, the first person that usually comes to mind as far as characters that are created under his umbrella is Ahsoka Tano. In fact, a lot of people really have criticized Filoni for really, you know, putting this character centerpiece and kind of, I don't know about really making her into a Mary Sue, I don't think that's fair, but they definitely have noticed that he does push her a lot, I mean, it's his, sort of, his character, um, the most popular character from his umbrella, I would say, like I mentioned earlier, and the first story in Tales of the Jedi is essentially her origin story, and I mean that literally. It's the birth of Ahsoka Tano. Um, this to me was not one of my one of the better ones from this um, six part miniseries. Now they're not bad. I'm not in any way saying that it's bad. You know, it just it didn't. It had a different feel to it. It had more of a mythical fantasy feel, kind of like something like a more like a Pocahontas than Star Wars. The music didn't even sound like much less Clone Wars music. It didn't even sound like Star Wars music. It was very, you know, fantasy rooted, not quite spacey, but more never ending story type of music uh, as we see this village sort of, you know, and the birth of Ahsoka Tano, which to me really mirrors like the birth of Simba in The Lion King. It was very much played up like that. And if you ever wondered what her actual birth was like and where they discovered that she could potentially be a Jedi based on, you know, her midi-chlorians or whatever the hell. Um, this is the story for you. But it, it only gets better from here. Like, that's the first one, and they improve. They go back to Ahsoka for the last two stories. And the last two stories took place... One took place before Revenge of the Sith, which is part of Anakin's hardcore training of Ahsoka Tano, which is basically meant to explain as to why she was able to take on so many clone troopers. Um during the Revenge of the Sith portion um, during the Season 7 finale of Clone Wars. So that was a cool little story. And then the last story takes place literally during the funeral for Padme. It starts there where Bail Organa sees... He sees um, Ahsoka. She's there at the funeral. Gives her a communicator you know, to eventually you know, be called upon for whatever reason. And she goes off. And like leaves, pretty much leaves the battle. You know, left the order. The order was already dead at that point. She tries to live a regular life. But soon it becomes known of her presence. The Sith Inquisitors come after her. And she realizes she may have to get back into the fight. Which would lead to what she would do in Rebels. So um, it was meant to sort of tie in these loose ends. Uh, they're not really loose ends, I don't think, to be honest. It's just things that... I guess Filoni and the crew felt they had to explain or further indulge upon. You know, that way they sort of wrap up. I guess you can, I don't really call them loose ends, but it's sort of going to at least add new backstory and new purpose and new and recontextualizes um, 
the decisions that Ahsoka Tano makes. Now, the other big story is about Count Dooku's descent to the dark side. And this was good stuff. Now, the story of Dooku's descent to the dark side was covered in, I believe, one of the novels many years ago. This is the first time it's been told through the eyes of Dave Filoni. And it goes back, actually, to before The Phantom Menace. Count Dooku and Mace Windu go to investigate the death of this Jedi. And it's a mystery because Dooku is already questioning how is it that the Jedi died, but the senator that the Jedi was protecting lived. And we find out that um, the reason for that is because there was a betrayal done by the people of the planet because they see the Jedi as being these... Not really being keepers of the peace, but more so as being protectors of a corrupt government. You know, which is actually very much uh, political commentary for what a lot of people, people view the police as. You know, the police, it, there's a lot of controversy, especially a couple of years ago when those riots went down. Because the cops, you know, are, their civic duty is supposed to be to keep the peace, but really they protect the rich. That's what a lot of people believe. And uh, there's definitely evidence to that based on where, you know, the, 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 you know, certain police officers and how they feel about certain communities. But that's neither here nor there. Uh, it doesn't mean that all cops are bad at all. But basically, that's the story is that Count Duke was sort of made to realize that the Jedi are basically puppets of the Senate, that they had become that. You know, um, now whether that happened early or later in the story, that's difficult to tell. Like, we don't know exactly when that corruption began, but basically, this is one example of a corrupt senator that had nothing to do with Palpatine or the plot to overthrow a Jedi. Nothing to do with that. But Duke, who of all Jedi, witnesses that, and that then takes us to the next episode, which is a really great episode, my favorite one, takes place during the time of Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace, where we have a meeting during the middle of the movie, basically, that wasn't shown on screen between Count Dooku and Qui-Gon Jinn. Qui-Gon, of course, being a student of Count Dooku's, and the discussion about how he saw a Sith Lord, and Dooku comments that he had been telling the, the Council about the uprising evil for a long time, but he felt it. Of course, by the end of the story... Count Dooku ends up finding out that Qui-Gon Jinn has been killed. And so we find out that, and we actually see Count Dooku, we actually see him deleting Kamino from the Jedi archives and taking, of course, the place of Jedi Master sifo who didn't actually do it. Um, this was the mystery that was supposed to be solved in Episode 3, according to George Lucas, back in the mid-2000s, but he didn't have time to put it in the film. So it was later explained in Clone War Season 6, but now we actually see him doing it and we see him going to go meet with, you know, Pat Palpatine, really, you know, early Darth Sidious. And, you know, the whole story is that, you know, both Dooku and Sidious, they both lost apprentices because Qui-Gon died and, of course, Darth Maul died. Waddle ends up following Dooku and it's interesting because the only thing we know about Jedi Waddle is that Waddle was on the council in the first movie but not in the second one so this is dave filoni explaining what happened now we know that at some point waddle left the jedi order now we find out that it's because waddle actually agreed with dooku that they didn't really protect qui-gon the way they should have from this sith lord didn't really take him seriously which wound up leading to his death and you know at one point waddle kind of agrees with dooku but waddle does not agree with dooku about joining up with this Sith Lord, Darth, you know, Darth Sidious. So they have this duel that ends up leading to Count Dooku, you know, picking his allegiance, you know, and him actually becoming Lord Tyrannus. Now, of course, Palpatine does not call him Darth Tyrannus. They didn't want to mirror that episode three scene with Anakin too much, but it is sort of his episode three moment, moment where he has to pick between you know, the dark or the light side, and Dooku had already seen enough corruption that he picked the dark side, not realizing that the dark side was really the corrupt side, that they were the ones that were kind of the ones sneaking in to manipulate the Senate and doing things of that nature. There's always going to be corruption in government, but Palpatine's obviously the grand corruptor of all, you know, when it comes to the Star Wars saga. But I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed the voice work. I enjoyed the uh, storytelling and all these episodes. They were all fun. Um, 
like I said, episode one has a different feel to it. They really get good around episode three, and then all the ones from three and up are like really good, and they're short. So, and even the first two are not bad. I'm not saying they're bad. They were fun, but they really get turned up a new level with episode three and up. So, Tales of the Jedi, definitely worth seeing if you're a Star Wars fan. Very much enjoyed it. Um, Unlike Andor that I heard was getting better, I did hear that, but didn't really capture my attention. With these, you don't have to watch each one. They all are kind of standalone stories, but they do tie together somewhat. So, it's best just watch them all. They're short enough. Anyways... That's all I have for you today. Take care. And um, what did you think? Let me know and we'll talk soon.